Hey, Jessica. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? This is so cool. This has become such a big deal with you answering all these uncomfortable <laughs> questions about pets. And I really appreciate you showing up again and doing this because it's been so helpful. We've gotten so much feedback and we're getting so many questions. Guys, if you have questions, you know, uncomfortable questions about your pet, <laughs> or maybe you could slip in a comfortable one. I don't know. Um, you want to send it, you can put it in the comments. Um, you could, you know, email it. Put in the comments really helps because people see it. So that would be really cool. Yeah. So if, hey, Jessica, can I just get started? Yeah, of course. Okay. Get right so into it. So I've got a question here and the person's name is photography photography Photo they must have a photography <laughs> channel or something they like must yeah okay. so are right, you ready for the question I'm ready now you were gonna also tell me a story can you tell me about that real quick yeah I was actually gonna tell you a story about a black Labrador in Pennsylvania her name is Abby and she was missing for 10 years but the story winds up really beautifully so I will tell you that at the end but let's get these questions answered first oh man I want to hear about it now okay I'll wait <laughs> I'll wait okay so this is what photography said. I'm thinking that's not the real name. Hey, I have an Aussie doodle who makes a very loud, high-pitched noise that sounds like he is dying when we are walking and past people, other dogs, birds, or squirrels, etc. Is there any way to stop this, and what do you think's causing it? Thanks. Yeah, so it sounds like, of course, there's very limited information in this question, and there would be so many questions I would ask and so many observations I would make in person with this dog and with you. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like just on the surface that your dog is super excited, wants to meet and greet these people, wants to play with these animals, and just doesn't know how to control themselves, how to calm themselves. So really, if you haven't gone through, I have another um, series going on right now on YouTube. I have two series going on on YouTube. I have this one and I have the beginner dog training series. If you haven't gone through the entire beginner dog training series playlist, I highly recommend you do that because it's amazing, but it's also free on YouTube. So I would recommend going through all of that because it sounds like you really need to put in a lot of foundational work uh, with your dog to help them just be able to control their emotions some. Um, it might also be worth checking out um, socializing some more. I don't know what level of socialization your dog is at, but it definitely sounds like they uh, need a little bit of help in that area. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely something that you can work with with your dog. Um, and you know, it's really a, a good thing that your dog wants to interact with other people and other animals because not every animal does, not every dog does. Um, we just have to manage that and help your dog control those emotions a little bit better. And of course, if, if I were to actually come and train with you, I would be evaluating the amount of both mental and physical exercise your dog is getting um, before and after walks, just generally through a day, through a week. So we, we want, there's so many things we wanna check, but definitely go through the beginner dog training series. Um, I'll put a link in the description so you can start from the beginning of the playlist and work with your dog week by week as you go through the playlist. Um, also, you can join the family, join the group. I'll put a link in the description to join the group because there are thousands of pet parents in, in this group and my group are, that love to be able to help as well as myself. I'm in the group too. And so you can post the wins, you can um, ask about things that you're working on with your dog or frustrations you're having, help other pet parents in the group as well. So I highly recommend um, those two resources for you. Okay, that's really helpful. I really appreciate you covering that. Now this yeah. next question, I gotta okay. say, I've heard this over and over again. I know this is gonna help a lot of people because this is probably okay. one of the most common questions that I think people are asking out there. This is from really? Chantel from New Jersey. Okay, Okay, Chantel. so that's in the US here. Um, the question is this, simple question. I know everybody needs help with this one. Why won't my dog walk on a leash? Ah, Chantel. <laughs> so, I actually just recorded a video about this that is going up, um, I think, the, the week after this video goes up. Um, it's part of the beginner dog training series. I know I don't want to like beat a dead horse here, but <laughs> um, I've just talked about it with the other 
in the other answer for the first question, but I definitely do recommend you going through the beginner dog training series and uh, because at the end of it, and there's a reason it's at the end of the beginner dog training series, believe me, I'm talking about walking on a leash. It is not normal. I'm gonna say that one more time. It is not normal for a dog to walk at a slow pace or to walk next to you, close to you, attached to you with a leash. These are not normal behaviors for a dog. So we actually have to teach and train our dog that using positive reinforcement, of course, that these are the behaviors that we expect out of them. So walking politely on a leash or walking on a leash at all is definitely something that every dog we have to work with. We have to use positive reinforcement to show them that it's okay uh, and that we, to, to be on a leash, that a leash is even an okay thing. Some dogs are scared of them, so we have to work with them. And to actually walk on a loose leash slowly by your side is something we have to work on with every single dog. So again, check the link in the description for the beginner dog training series playlist right here on YouTube. Also join the group um, because that's another really great resource where you can even post videos of you working with your dog and I can help you uh, with whatever is going on. So definitely uh, check out those two links in the description and uh, you, you'll figure it out, I promise, because there's a lot of great information in both of those resources. Awesome, another great answer. I know that's gonna help Thank a lot you. of people out because they have problems <laughs> with their dogs walking on them. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I gotta take my breath on this one. This this is the the last question before we hear that story, and I'm still looking forward to the story. Yeah. Okay, I wanna hear about Abby. That's what I, I know. Hear um, uh, we take any kind of questions, okay? I don't care how uncomfortable they may be. We take any kind of questions. That sounds like this, this one's is, uncomfortable. <laughs> um, from Regina in Arizona. Okay. okay. So this is the question that Regina had. All right, <clears throat> Regina. <clears throat> you ready for this? I don't know, am I? <laughs> Why does my male dog have nipples? Oh, okay. I can see how that comes across as a very uncomfortable question, but um, biology. <laughs> so just like us, just like humans, Dogs, canines, are mammals, and every mammal has nipples. Um, just because your dog, a male, just like a male human, doesn't need them, they still have them. And it's basically because when embryos form in utero, they're, they all form the same up to a point where sex is determined. So, it, so an embryo in utero is going to form a lot of different things without even knowing yet what sex that child or pup is going to be. So, you know, the basic formation, the skeletal formation, skin, um, nipples, all these different things are being formed before gender is even established in utero. So that's really why every every embryo that develops is going to have nipples. And it, just because males, uh, male mammals don't actually utilize them, um, biology, just, just through the years, evolution hasn't gotten rid of them because they don't cause any harm whatsoever. So there's no need for evolution to get rid of them. So that's really why, I mean, it's just because every embryo in utero forms any and everything a body needs um, prior to determining gender and that's just one of the thing that, things that forms prior to determining gender in utero. Does that make sense? It makes yes. sense. It okay. makes total <laughs> sense. It's really helpful. I really appreciate you doing this. But I know everybody's waiting to hear about Abby. This yeah. is a really cool story. And I got to tell you, I know a little bit about this, so I'm not going to tip anybody off. Why don't you just jump in there and tell them about Abby? Yeah, so I recently read this story about a black Labrador retriever named Abby in Pennsylvania. So. Abby was in the yard playing with the kids of the family and it just vanished. They had no idea where Abby went. They searched for her. They looked for her everywhere. They put flyers up and they were devastated. Weeks went by and months went by and years went by. And all of a sudden, 10 years later, Abby showed up on the porch of a man just 10 miles away from the house where Abby disappeared from. Fortunately, Abby had a microchip and 
When the uh, SPCA there in the county in Pennsylvania came and picked Abby up, they were able to locate the microchip. And because the family still lived in that same house 10 years later, first of all, you can update microchip information and you, you definitely should always update your microchip information if your pets are microchipped. But they happened to live in the same house 10 years later and they were able to reunite that family with their dog, Abby, 10 years after she had gone missing. She was only 10 miles away when she was found and it was just a wonderful story. Um, I think, you know, for me, reading between the lines, they obviously had no idea where Abby was, but she was in good health, she was in good shape. So more than likely another family had um, taken her in and taken care of her and something happened where she got away again. And um, she fortunately found her way back to her original family who of course took her back in and was so happy to have her back, which is just a wonderful and beautiful story. So I wanted to share that because Everybody needs a little pick-me-up. Dogs are amazing. Aren't Dogs they? are amazing. I mean, they just really <laughs> are amazing. As a matter of fact, what I'd like to do, I'm going to tip the camera down just for Can a second. I want to show everybody what's at your feet right Can now. Can you see my Kimmy? There she is. And my beautiful Kimmy. That's the famous Miss Kim. <laughs> a lot of you guys are very interested in Kim. She is a rescue from Mexico, and she has been with us for five years. Is that right? Five years. Five years, she's a beautiful dog. She just stands by Jessica's side all the time. <laughs> so Jessica, if somebody has heard this uh, and they have more questions and they need more answers, okay. what could they do? So many things you can do. First of all, if you have a very specific question, uh, post it in the comments below because I can answer it. I can not only answer it directly to you on YouTube, but I can include it in a video just like this one to help other people. Um, so I love when you do that, but there are so many wonderful resources. Check the description box below for everything I'm about to tell you. So we've got the group, which I know I've mentioned uh, before in this video, but it really, I, I, what I didn't mention is that there are a ton of free files in the group. They, they're completely free to you once you join the group and they answer all of the most frequently asked questions of people in the group. So potty training, um, what should I, should I put a collar or a harness on my, I mean, there are, I mean, just dozens and dozens of the most frequently asked questions and I literally just spell it all out. Um, most requested uh, products that people want that there's so many free files in the group so definitely check out the link in the description and join the group i also have a book and you can get a super inexpensive digital copy of my book and what that is again it, the link is in the description it's the seven miracle steps is what the book is called um, it covers my seven canine commandments which are the foundation of training everything i teach to all of my in-home clients before we work on anything else and so many times i've gone into a house and whatever issues or behavioral problems people were having with their dogs we put these seven miracle steps in place in their home and these behavioral issues diminished to almost nothing sometimes just went away completely just by putting these foundational uh, pieces in in their home so I definitely recommend you check out the book super super inexpensive you can get a digital copy download it right away and start reading it um, I also have online video training courses uh, which are also linked in the description below for if you if you have other needs that are maybe more specific like separation anxiety and things like that um, so definitely check the link in the description for that and oh the beginner dog training series playlist right here on youtube give that a check too because i cover so many things that any anybody any beginner <laughs> um, whether you've had dogs before or you just got your very first dog and you need help the beginner dog training series is for you and it's free right here on YouTube so definitely check the link to the playlist in the description below so all of those resources available to you awesome thank you so much and uh, you're gonna you're gonna be back here next week doing this again I'm gonna be back next week back again so guys submit your questions Put them in the comments section below. And Jessica, if you'd like to tell everybody goodbye, now would be a good time. This I would. Over. 
yes, thank you so much for being here with me today. Whether you are a returning subscriber or somebody new to my channel, I appreciate each and every one of you. So what I want you to do is look right down there. And if that subscribe button is red, go ahead and click it turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video. Uh, also give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions at all or even comments about what we covered in this video. So uh, with that, I will end this video and I will see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.